Hello everyone and welcome to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an overview of this quad channel memory kit from G-Skill. This is the G-Skill Ripjaw Z 32 gig, that's 4 by 8 gigabytes DDR3-1866 memory kit. Let's start off with a closer look and uh, first off you'll notice Ripjaw Z designed for Intel LGA 2011 processors and X79 platforms. So if you're familiar with Intel's LGA 2011 socket, you will know that X79 uh, as well as the Intel LGA 2011 processors provide a quad channel memory support. So that is why this is a quad channel kit, two on the back, two on the front, eight gigs on each stick and that gives you quad channel support because you should ideally have four of the exact same sticks of memory to run in a quad channel configuration. That being said, this will, uh, memory will also work just fine in uh, other Intel platforms as well as AMD platforms provided of course that you're running DDR3 memory and you should of course look for uh, timings that are supported. If you really want to double check, you can check the motherboard manufacturer's com uh, memory compatibility chart and as long as you have memory that's within that range or that's specifically listed there, um, then that should give you a much better idea of what's going to be supported. So we have some more specs as well as a detailed item number up there. So this is the F3-14900CL10Q-32GBZL. Now, uh, the, the shorthand of that is that it's a DDR3-1866 memory, as already mentioned, 1866 speed. You'll notice also the PC3 rating there, 14900. A lot of folks often reference those numbers and ask me what the deal is with that. Uh, the shorthand is, at least from my personal perspective, is that I don't really pay attention to the P PC3 numbers. I really look at the, uh, the effective speed or the mega transfers per second, which is 1866 on this one. Uh, if you really want to know the, the simple way, and this is, this is glossing over a lot of stuff, but the prefetch buffer for DDR3 memory is 8. Uh, basically, if you take that rated speed, multiply it by 8, that will give you the PC3 uh, rating for the memory. Um, again, that's a very simplified version, but just to sort of give a brief explanation. So we have 8,192 megabytes in each stick of this memory. Four of them total gives you 32 gigs, and the timings, which is also very important if you want to look at memory, although not quite as important as the speed in my personal opinion, CL10, 10-11-10-30, uh, uh, this also has uh, 1.5, is 1.5 volt memory, so you should use it in a system that is rated as such. There's some more information from G-Skill about this memory in particular, if you want to read over that. Of course, also G-Skill contact information, FCC compliance, all that good stuff. You also get a G-Skill case badge, which I will hold right side up. There you go. If you're into case badges, you can stick that on your case. And now we'll take a closer look at the memory itself. Again, four sticks here. They're all the same, so I'm just going to take a closer look at this one right here. So this is the Ripjaws Z version of G-Skills memory, which means they have a distinctive red, in this case, heat spreader attached to the memory itself. What I really like about the sticks memory uh, actually here is that they have a black PCB and that can often be difficult to find. So in particular, if you're building a system and you want everything to match really nicely, it's nice to have that black PCB because it doesn't uh, detract from the look at least. That's completely aesthetics. It has nothing to do with the speed or performance of the memory, of course, but uh, it, there it is. Uh, also, of course, got a reflective G-Skill logo. All that information I already listed off for you right there. And um, you will note this is Intel XMP ready again. So what I'm going to do next is install the four sticks into our test bed and show you guys how to set that up. Actually, before the XMP demo, a really quick uh, measurement here because I do want to point out the height of these sticks of memory. So with the heat spreader in place, measuring from the very base of the gold contacts, we have just shy of one and five eighths inch tall. Or if you use the metric system, like lots of intelligent people do, that would be just over four centimeters. Now, as this memory is a quad channel kit designed uh, not specifically for, but geared towards LGA 2011 X79 platforms, here is a look at it plugged in. We're running on an ASUS uh, Sabertooth X79 test bed, so we're running quad channel memory mode. Have all four DIMMs plugged in, and uh, we're also running a Core i7-3960X processor. So let me, go, let me show you guys a quick look at how to set this memory up properly just using XMP settings, extreme memory profile from Intel because that is one of the easiest and quickest ways to get it running at its rate at speed. So when I just installed the memory, you can see right here in our ASUS Easy Mode UEFI, uh, we can see all 32 gigs are registered right there, so that is good. We can also see right now it's running at DDR3-1333, and we know this is 1866 memory, so we want to set that up. First thing I'm going to do is jump into advanced mode by pressing F7. Bear in mind, different motherboards are going to have different UEFI designs. This is all might be slightly different, but the end goal is the same, and that is to get this set up with XMP. Uh, for ASUS, at least, you go over to the AI Tweaker tab. 
under AI Overclock Tuner. Right now it's set on auto. auto. I am going to just change that to XMP. And then we can see the XMP profile for the memory is listed right here at 1866 or 1867 speed. We have timing of 10, 9, 10 11, 10, 30, uh, 2N, 1.5 volt. And that's profile number one. This actually has two profiles uh, set up. We can switch between them. They're roughly the same. I think there's some lower level timings that might be a little bit different. Um, but once we have that plugged in, we can see our target DRAM speed is set up and that's pretty much all we need to do. If I wanted to, I could go down here to uh, DRAM timing control to take a closer look at some of the settings. And um, a lot of folks will actually use XMP as sort of a jumping off point and then go in and do some more tweaks to it uh, as they see fit. But for my purposes, I just want to get this set up and running uh, from the get-go. So I'm going to reboot real quick and then I'll show you how to double check this in Windows. So now with Windows booted up, I am just going to go ahead and launch CPU-Z. And um, CPU-Z is an awesome program. It's free to download. You can find it at CPUID.com. And uh, it's just really easy to sort of get, get an assessment of all of the hardware in your system with. There's other ways to check this, but I'm uh, just using this for now because I like it. So up here at the top, of course, we have different tabs for all the different hardware. Just jump over to memory, we can again see all the memory installed, 32 gigs. We can also see our DRAM frequency. Uh, we can see our front side bus to DRAM ratio. We can also see all of the cast latencies laid out right there. We can even go to the SPD tab to um, actually see more specifically uh, JDAC values, XMP values, for example. Uh, but for our purposes, all we really are caring about right now is that DRAM frequency. And you might say 933, well, Paul, that's not 1866. Well, it is because DDR, you remember what DDR stands for? That's double data rate. That's because it actually transfers data on the rising and falling edges of, the, of each clock cycle, which means 933 times two, and that's 1866. So we're all set up and running at the proper frequency. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the G-Skill Ripjaw Z 32 gig quad channel memory kit. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.